investor and a philanthropist. Mr. Lemelu chairs privately held investment firm Pairs <coughs> Holdings and Nigeria's largest quarter conglomerate, Transcorp. Mr. Lumilu invests across Africa, <coughs> primarily in the oil and gas, financial services, hospitality and power sectors. His investments are informed by his philosophy of Africa capitalism, the belief that the private sector can lead Africa's economic renaissance and that investment should create both economic prosperity and social wealth. Mr. Lumilu sits on a number of public and social sector boards, including the United Nations Sustainable Energy for All Initiative, and USAID Private Capital Group for Africa Partners Forum. He is also the Chairman of Pan-African Financial Services Group, United Bank for Africa, and the founder of the Tony Illuminu Foundation, which has seeded 100 million through the Tony Illuminu Entrepreneurship Program, championing entrepreneurship across Africa over the next 10 years. With that, I would like to leave the stage for you and to look forward to hearing your Ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, honored to be here with you for a variety of reasons. Uh, the most uh, important reason is uh, this is the future of the world, and I also see the future of African leaders here. Some of you have interacted with since I walked into this uh, hall. Uh, some I know from before, and some are connected with one or the other. And I believe, as you do, that no one but us will develop Africans. No love of Africa will have to change or address our challenges. We have to do it ourselves. And I want to say, being here, organizing this kind of event, assembling the kind of people you've assembled here, is uh, an indication of the fact that uh, we take the renaissance of Africa, the development of Africa, the addressing of our challenges very seriously, and I want to congratulate you all. I also want to thank Professor okay, and uh, and uh, where is the, my friend? Uh, I come was here. <laughs> yeah, <where is he? laughs> yeah. Also, you know I'm looking for you. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Two of you. <laughs> Thank you very much for this opportunity to, to see our future leaders. So I'm told I should share my thoughts with you about um, finding solution to our problem for the day, about the development of the continent. I know you've spent a whole day here, and I'll try to keep it simple. If I'm making it interactive. And uh, I know you would like, you might have questions you want to ask uh, in a no hold back fashion. Uh, it would be nice to to open the room for conversation and you know, so that we can, we can interact in a, more, in a way that uh, the, the tiredness of the whole day will <laughs> go. But let me just say two brief things. One is about what we just saw now, the, the short, uh, by the way, this is my first time I've seen this, uh, this, uh, this video. I've never seen it before, and as, uh, it was showing now, writing down a few improvement ideas. <laughs> 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 so, it's about entrepreneurship. You know, Africa, we've heard a lot about Africa, Africa rising, the demographic dividend of Africa, and everything. And I see two people I talk with. Today's demographic dividend in Africa can become a demographic doom if we don't do something about it. If Africa must create 10 million jobs every year between now and 2030, if we must deal and convert our demographic dividend quote or boom, our dividend to a demographic boom, if we don't do that, we'll be creating problems for the entire continent for the world at large. And so it becomes and behoves of every one of us to deal with the issue of job pressure, the issue of creating, of developing Africa. You cannot talk of an all-inclusive development or growth of Africa without dealing with the issue of job, which will keep our youth fully engaged. What you saw about the Tony Elmino Entrepreneurship Program 
is our own little way of addressing this is your job or unemployment situation in Africa. It's our only two way of helping to drive the development of Africa from within. So in a way it is Africa solution to Africa challenges. We realize that and you all know this better than I do, that governments don't create jobs. They don't have the capacity, even though the intent and the willingness is there. But they can never create enough jobs for our people. Globally, SMEs create jobs. They drive the, they are the engine of growth for the economies. And that is what it is everywhere. That's what has to help us in Africa. And so for every entrepreneur on the continent that will assist with deep support to, to create jobs for himself first, and also create jobs for a few other people, then we are playing our role in helping to address the issue of sustainable and genuine development of Africa from within. As you all live here and return hopefully to Africa, you should you know, see how you play your own role here by getting employed or by actually becoming entrepreneurs too, or by supporting entrepreneurs like others have been doing, like uh, Oslo Kerry and others do on the continent. The second point I want to talk about is the philosophy we can talk about here of African capitalism. So, if we backtrack or go back in history, there was a time some of us, young as we were, the Patrick and one and I were in the car now, we're not talking about uh, how time has passed. I know how, and how you don't know you're getting old. <laughs> Until you see things, you know, you see, you see, you see, they say, wow, you gradually get old. And so, in 1997, some of us came together and acquired the District Financial Institution. We acquired the District Financial Institution, we turned it around, we set targets for ourselves, strategic plans, like, right? you know, targets, you know, you have first year strategic intent, want to make it a viable financial services uh, company. Second tier intent, want to become a leading financial services group in the, on the continent. And third financial intent, strategic intent, to become a player in the global financial arena. And so we went about all of this. Tier one, we are complete tier one, likely within 10 years. And tier two, of becoming a significant player on the African continent, we actually do this so that today we have presence in 19 African countries, uh, United of Africa, we serve over, over, over 8 to now about 10 million customers on the continent. Uh, we, have, um, we have about 1,000 branches across Africa. And so then the 30 in terms of again becoming pre having presence in, on the uh, global scene. I would say we have presence in Paris, in London, and we today are the only the only bank that operates in that, only African bank, all of Africa, that operates in US or regulated by the OC, um, OCC in US. We are operating in New York, here, Rockefeller, 57 plants. But all of these brought certain things to, to the fore, to, 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 to our attention. That what started a little investment in 1997 today has done a lot. Okay, it's created wealth for us and for people who have been involved in this. It's created significant wealth for shareholders. We have over 300,000 shareholders, public company, in this business alone. We also have over 20,000 staff across Africa working in the both Anglophone Africa and Francophone Africa. And so, well, the lesson is, how did we get here? We got here through, so we started interrogating how we got there, you know, yes, uh, leadership, intelligence, and that. But there was an overriding drive, and that is the need to invest long term. Invest long term in key set of, in this case, financial sector, which is very strategic for the continent, because we try to democratize banking, we try to create access to banking facilities. We we'll try to facilitate payment, we we'll support the SMEs. So we we'll realize that this investment that was driven by long-term vision 
actually has been able to create a lot. Not just for us, but also for the community where we've done business for individuals in the ecosystem. And that led to the philosophy of Africa as well. Just summarizing or just defining the concept is, you know, first the realization that the private sector in Africa has a role to play in the development of Africa, which again speaks to what you're doing, the, the theme of your session. And two, that the private sector in Africa must invest in key sectors of the African economy that have the ability to create both right, economic prosperity and social wealth. So you take any business, you know, just to think long term, then investment, key sectors, power, infrastructure, energy, areas that can create economic return for the shareholders as well as create uh, social wealth. So to me, I see this as an Africa solution to Africa's challenge. That the tenets of African capitalism, if we go with them, if we have them drive on, we do our well investments to a large extent, will help us also achieve the purpose of sustainable development for the continent. We believe that first, no one but us develop the continent. We believe too that we need to invest in long term key sectors. For, so, for a long time, Africa has been. You know, an extractive site. You know, we just have commodities, you know, material, raw materials, and we ship this and we pour them back in finished form. And that value addition, value creation phase where you process and create value locally is lost. And so the growth in Africa is not expressed in growth in Africa. So the growth in Africa is expressed only in GDP, tell that at times not inclusive and I could not feel it. So we believe that African capitalism plus entrepreneurship, developing and supporting entrepreneurs on the continent and the entire ecosystem from advocacy to access to finance to training to creating networking platform for people to mentoring will help to develop Africa in a sustainable fashion. Well, we're very excited to have you here and you know, I've seen what you've done and what the foundation has done. So first of all, um, my name is Francis Matthew, so I'm, I'm a risk model of the American Express here in New York. And a lot of what we do is actually uh, helping the GCP portfolio lend money to small businesses. And just like your foundation is, most of the challenges we have in Africa is we have some small businesses that need a call to maybe their business is worth less than 50000 naira, but they need, they need that credit and, and uh, they need the ability to be able to sustain their business. And these are, you know, millions of folks all over Nigeria. What, you know, what has your, your friend done to address those needs? I know there are challenges of data and having to, you know, have maybe data to build models and be able to manage the port. But what has your friend does to the, the segment that I'm talking about, who are people that live in the neighborhood of <laughs> okay, so um, I wear many hats. When you say firm, I think I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the financial institution, the bank. Okay, so you need to. So I wear many hats. I chairman of UBA in Edinburgh, for Africa. But more importantly, I'm the chairman of ESOD. ESOD is like a group holding company that has. Uh, interest in banking, oil and gas, power, real estate, and stability. And then also, I'm the founder of the Tunnel Melo Foundation. My intervention, my own, and so we try not to mix business and our philanthropic call. And so the bank, United Bank of Africa, they have, like your risk manager, they have their risk uh, acceptance criteria in the area of credit for the law what they will not do. And they produce for shareholders in the manner that is African capitalist, you know, which is they engage the communities, they do things, they, they create wealth, but they also intervene in, uh, in areas like uh, infrastructure support, etc., to, uh, to drive uh, ultimate level for the continent. They have their own risk criteria, the parameters that they use. But the family commits or has committed 100 million, 100 million US dollars to support entrepreneurs across the continent. Every year, where they find 1,000 Africans from 55 countries, I will give them 
uh, the support. In fact, someone came to greet me here and he said he introduced himself as a beneficiary of the tenure development program that he, he was last year's uh, class. Is he here? Brian or someone? Yeah, Brian, can you come and tell us? If, uh, maybe you should respond to this. <laughs> Come and tell us how the, how the foundation has helped me to address the issue with the general community. Yes. So. Um, okay, so I didn't expect this spotlight, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, so first of all, I wanted to, again, uh, like everybody else, appreciate this opportunity to be here and learn from everybody else, especially Mr. Tony himself. Um, I'm Brian Asinja, a uh, Ugandan born and uh, US educated since high school. Uh, I started Dream Africa three years ago uh, to address the lack of uh, digital content specifically for children uh, globally. Uh, statistically, only 10% of children's literature is from minority publishers, including Africans. So, our mission is really to increase uh, accessibility and availability of uh, engaging and educational family friendly content. Uh, we are currently piloting in Kenya uh, with funding from the Kenyan government as well as support from the British Council and we hope to expand to other areas. Um, with specific to the question on how the foundation and other entities have been helpful or supportive, um, I would say the first uh, thing was knowledge or access to knowledge. Um, and specifically for me, the very fact that uh, somebody like Tony existed in Africa. So I think growing up, I didn't have any uh, mentors or superheroes, as you would say, from a business perspective. Uh, and so to allude to your question, uh, I think somebody else asked earlier around branding. Uh, when you see somebody else who's done it, it does instill an extra layer of confidence, and that to me is priceless. Uh, but back to the business side of things, um, we had very supportive mentors. Um, our mentor was very good that we decided to keep him on and uh, get him some equity. Uh, so he's still on board and is advising us as, uh, uh, on the financial side of things. Uh, but as in other areas, we've been able to then be able to set specific goals uh, around our Africa launch, and uh, my co-founder is, is Kenyan, so we decided uh, that because the Kenyan government has been rather aggressive uh, in creating business-friendly policies, that that would be the right place to start and launch. Uh, and so we're very lucky that they currently have $100 million dedicated to digitizing the educational uh, system that we are uh, already engaging the Ministry of Education to, to sort of be part of that pilot launch this summer. Uh, of course, there's still a lot to be done. Of course, uh, there's a lot of work um, as a startup. Uh, but I think uh, going through that process with other peers, uh, having the network where you can constantly uh, post questions and get the support and mentorship you need, uh, really makes a whole lot of difference uh, rather than going it alone. So um, I think continuing to access information and other resources, uh, whether it's mentorship or, or policy guidance uh, with regards to navigating the legal system in Africa, um, those are things that, you know, experienced or not, we will continue to need guidance on. Um, and that will be my short answer. Thank you. Thank you. He's a very intelligent man. Yeah. Impromptu, I see how organized you organize it more than everything. <laughs> so when you hear that Africa is rising, say yes, Africa is rising. So why are people like this? You know, and so for me, the satisfaction of the Tony Emilio Entrepreneurship Program, you know, to have so last year we have a thousand people like him in Africa. This year, we have another 1,000 people like him in Africa and see what he's talking about, what they're doing, what they want to do. That, in my viewpoint, is capability, and that, in my viewpoint, is truly finding an African solution to African challenges, African development issues. It doesn't come better than this. 
he and the panel, and you know, and I like two points he said I need to emphasize. He talked about advocacy for change, and he talked about networking opportunity. In fact, he talked about the third one, which is management education. And to me, if you look at what the seven pillars of tea, these three are very important. And he didn't talk about capital, that the company, yes, it's, I believe it's application, but that's not even as important as these other ones. Because if you have a good idea, well, if it's proved very well, money will come. But you need to have a good idea. You know how to prepare your statement of accounts, you know, leadership issues, like the question that a young lady asked here, business challenges, etc. And as he said also, the fact that in your local environment or in Africa, because you know, you're growing up, growing up at times you think you don't have successful business models in Africa or role models in Africa. See people from the same circumstances, the same environment, the same challenges succeed. It's even a lot push for you to also succeed in life. And I say to people, if someone like me can do it, you can even do a lot better, you know, and we do this a better thing. So let's talk about the three things. The networking platform, you have a thousand entrepreneurs from across Africa. There's a network, a system where all of you can key in, you can ask questions, you can talk to people, they can get back to you. It's wonderful. You build your own network. And so talking about integrating Africa, that is the way to integrate the continent. Talk about mentoring. They talk about mentors. Even that is the mentors. Because we have 400 mentors. And please, I open this up to you all. If you want to be a mentor, if you visit the website, the Tony Function website, uh, you there will be opportunity to register, enroll, and we will screen, etc., talk with you, and take it from there. Because the African entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs world over need mentors. They need people who have been there, who have seen it to share ideas and talk with them. So that he talked, he, he, he talked about. I talked about networking, um, mentorship, and only about business education we talked about. So very, very important. But just to say that uh, I have got to realize through my own life experience and journey that the best thing you can do for someone is to make some efficient man. And not necessarily to feed people. And that's why in our philanthropy giving, because at some point in life you begin to think of legacy, you begin to think of positive impact, enduring impact. How do you want to be remembered? And I have also said to my friends, you know, and to everyone that before now people used to be measured by how much they have in their bank accounts. In today's world and going forward, no one cares about how much you have in your bank account. It's about the impact and the legacy that you leave behind that's important. And so, when you see that, and you to think of this, you tell yourself, how do I want to remember? I, I mean, you don't know how excited I am to see Chris, to see Brad, people I never knew met in my life like this, and just think of 10,000 of them, my God's will in 10 years' time. It doesn't get any better. You don't get any greater satisfaction than this. So the message is, we should think long-term in our investments, and we should think about legacy. These two extremely important for mankind. Thank you very much.